boys and girls, it's Mrs. Walker. Today we're going to talk about how we can use arrays to help us with multiplication. And specifically, we're going to break apart arrays to be able to help us solve multiplication problems. So that leads us to our learning goal. Our learning goal says, I can break apart arrays to solve multiplication problems. Okay, so that's exactly what we're going to do today, friends. So let's jump in and get started with a problem that's going to set us up for most of the rest of our work for today. Okay. So you're going to need your dry erase board for this. And it says a guitar string has six strings. I'm sorry. It says a guitar has six strings. How many strings are on three guitars? Write a multiplication equation to solve and then draw a number bond to match your equation. So what I would like for you to do is I would like for you to draw on your dry erase board, write out that multiplication equation that matches the problem, and try and draw a number bond that matches your equation. So remember, a guitar has six strings. How many strings are there on three guitars? Go ahead and pause the video, draw your um, number bond and your multiplication equation, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. Okay, so let me show you with what I came up with. If you're not finished, keep pausing the video so you have time to work. Okay, so here's what I came up with. So I came up with three times six because the first number in a multiplication um, equation is the number of groups. So for this, it represents the three guitars. And then there are six strings on each guitar. So that gives me my second factor. My number bond that matches that looks like this guy. Okay, so I have six um, in each group of three. So the smaller circles represent my, um, my three guitars and my six represent the strings on each guitar. Okay, so perfect if you guys have that that looks similar to mine. Great work. So let's dive in a little bit deeper because our lesson talked about how we were going to break apart arrays. Well, we didn't use arrays in this part of the problem. So now let's jump in in and we're going to draw some arrays that go along with it. So you're going to draw an array to represent the total number of guitar strings. Okay, so the same problem that we just did. Remember, one guitar has six strings, and how many strings are there on six guitars? You're going to let the number of strings on the guitar be one row. Okay, so you should have three guitars and six strings on each one. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video. Draw your... Um, array and then click play when you're ready. All right friends, so I'm going to share with you my array. Maybe. It's a little shy, I guess. Ta-da! There's my fancy array. <laughs> um, the only thing I want you guys to pay attention to is remember when we talked about arrays. You're trying to draw maybe simple pictures. I got a little fancy up here, but I do not want you to draw an array that has that many guitars. That would take far too long and becomes not very efficient or time friendly for you to be able to do that. Okay, so just make sure that you're normally drawing a quick draw for it. Um, for this, you could have drawn circles, squares, little triangles, little stars real quick. Um, but just keep that in mind. You don't want to draw out exactly what the picture is asking for. Okay, I just did it to be a little bit more fun of a picture. All right, so does your array look like mine? I hope that it does. What you have here is you have one row, two row, and three rows because that represents the guitars. And then you have one, two, three four, oh, crazy handwriting, five and six, that represents the number of strings on each guitar, okay? What I would like for you to do is I would like for you to draw a line across the, or I'm sorry, below the first row on your guitar. So I'm going to grab a line here too. I'm going to do this guy right there, okay? So that is my line right under the first array or the first part of the array okay now what I would like for you to do is I would like for you to write a multiplication excuse me a multiplication sentence to describe each part of your array so you need to draw a multiplication sentence that describes just this part right here of your array just that single part then you need to draw another um, 
or write another multiplication expression that describes just this part of your array, okay? So two separate equations, one for the top part of your array and one for the bottom part of your array. Once you're done, click play um, to resume and then we'll share what I came up with and see how, how close we are because I'm sure we'll be pretty close. Okay friends, so this is what I came up with for the first part of my array as one times six because there's one row with six guitar strings on each one. So one guitar, six guitar strings gives me one times six equals six. My second one, if I follow that same setup, it's going to be two times six equals 12 because there's two rows or two guitars with six in each row or six strings on each guitar. Okay. Now check out this. This is something a little bit different. I have six plus 12 equals three sixes. Do you guys think that that's true? Think about these numbers that I have right here. This is one six in my problem that gives me six. I have two sixes give me 12. So I did six plus 12 equals three sixes. That's true because I took my six from, let me grab my marker, took my six from here, my 12 from here, brought it down to my equation, and then this really represents one three, or one six, and this is two sixes. So one plus two gives me my three sixes, okay? So that's where it's a little bit different than something that we've kind of talked about, but this is something new that we're learning, okay? Now, check this out. Let me grab it. Oh, okay, we're getting a little crazy. All right, so now I have one times six plus two times six equals three sixes. Do you guys think that's true? Yeah, it's absolutely true because all I did was I took this equation up here and I took this equation and I brought them down here in my problem, okay? And I still kept those three sixes from right here, okay? So all I did was instead of making it, excuse me, instead of making it two separate problems as one times six and two times six, I combined them together and just added the total of each one, okay? Let me grab my pen here. All right. So here's one more thing. Okay, take a look at this one, friends. Where is this part of the problem coming from? Let's line it up right here. Okay, so if you notice, one times six and one times six, they're still there. Two times six and two times six are still there. I went from three sixes to six plus blank. What's going on on this side of the equation right here? What's this all about? Six plus blank, what's that all about? If you said it's the total from each group that I'm multiplying by, you're correct. So basically all they're doing is one times six, putting it over here. Now I need to do two times six, which we know from our problem up here, right, is going to be 12. Okay, so this is all about just different ways to write these same types of problems. Okay, let's jump in and look at this um, array. We're going to analyze our equations a little bit more than we just did. So let me bring back out our equation that we had. Okay, so 1 times 6 plus 2 times 6 equals blank. Well, what I want you guys to pay close attention to is what's in red. Those are called parentheses. Those are symbols that you use around part of your equation to group something together. So for example, I did one times six, okay, one times six goes right along with this set of my array. I use those parentheses around that to make sure that, that I knew that that was one group of my array. Then over here in my two times six, that represents this part of my array, which is two rows of six, okay? So I did that to be able to help remind me that that's one group, and I use parentheses to show that. That's one group of my array, 
Okay, so because we broke this equation, I'm sorry, because we broke this array up into two parts, that means we're going to have two parts when we come up with an equation with our parentheses. Okay, so let's take a look at another part of our problem. 1 times 2, or sorry, 1 plus 2 times 6 equals what? How did I come up with that? Where do you see that 1 and that 2 somewhere else? Yeah, it's the number of groups that I have. So here's, let me grab my pen. Here's one group, and then this together is two groups. So my one and my two are just the number of groups that I have, a number of how many are in each group, okay? So the first one has one group, and the second part of my array has two. So all I did was I talked about the number of groups, and I put those together to be able to talk about um, how many groups I have. So really, if I were to break it down again, check this out. That's where I get 3 times 6. How did I get 3 times 6? Where did that come from? Yeah, all I did was add the number of groups. So I added my 1 plus 2 to have a total of 3 groups. Okay, good job with that, friends. Now what I want you to do on your board is I want you to try and solve all three of those equations. Now, what happens if you solve one of those equations? What do you think you might be able to do very easily with the other two equations? I don't know. See what you come up with. See how maybe that might help you figure that out a little bit easier. Okay, so pause the video, solve those three equations, and then click play when you're ready to talk about it. All right, friends. Did you come up with 18? If you did, you got it, 18. So all three of these equations give us the product of 18. They're just three different ways to write the same problem. That's what I want you guys to notice. Three different ways to write the same problem, okay? So it's not just 18, it's 18 what? Because we were solving for the number of guitar strings. So it's 18 strings. Good job, friends. All right, let's look at this one last equation that I have here. So, I wrote 1 times 6 plus 2 times 6 equals 3 times 6. Do you guys think that that's true or false? What do you think? Yeah, I think it's true because all that we did, friends, was we took, let me grab my pen here, we took this part and we moved it down here. And then we took this part and moved it down here. Okay, so we took those to show that they're all equal to each other. You can break those apart in any, um, you can solve them in any way, but they're all going to give you the same product. That's the goal of today's lesson is we can break things down into smaller parts to be able to make it easier for us to multiply, but still know that it's gonna give you the same product as if you just added this whole array over here at one time or multiplied at one time. So you can break it apart into smaller multiplication problems, or you can do the whole array and one multiplication problem at a time. It's up to you on how you solve it, but they're both going to give you the same product, whether you break it apart or you keep it together. It doesn't matter. They're the same product. Okay, so that's the big part of our lesson for today. Um, let me jump back over here. You guys rocked our lesson since it was the guitar strings. I thought that was fun. You rocked it. Good job, friends. Um, you guys did a fantastic job today, really. Um, make sure that you check back in the module to see what you need to complete for your independent practice. As always, please let me know if you guys have any questions at all. I'm always here to help, and I would love to be able to do that. So please reach out if you need anything. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you soon. Bye, friends. Bye.